worship you, Abba Father. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. We just want to go to Matthew chapter number 6 from verses 9 to 13. The word of God says, In this manner therefore pray. Shall we raise our hands and pray together? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. <clears throat> your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's just go before God and thank him for the Lord's prayer. Father, we thank you. You have instructed us in this place, Almighty Father, to pray after the manner in which you have directed us. Indeed, indeed Lord God, you are the way, the truth, and the life. We come unto you and we say, Our Father, let your name be glorified this afternoon. Father, we thank you for daily bread, physical and spiritual bread. We thank you, Abba Father, for your teaching us to forgive as you have forgiven us. We thank you, Lord God, for you will not lead us into temptations, but you will deliver us from the evil one. Father, this afternoon we say the kingdom belongs to you. The power belongs to you. The greatness belongs to you, O oh God. Even honor belongs to you. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Shall we clap our hands to the living God? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to Zephaniah chapter number 3. From verse 13 to 20, our anchor. Hallelujah. Let's just stretch out our hands as we read together. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, neither shall a deceitful tongue. Hallelujah. We can go back to King James. It's fine. King James Version. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down and none shall make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that walketh, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time, I will bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, says the Lord. Hallelujah. I want us to shout to our living God as we celebrate the anchor today. Hallelujah. We're just going to celebrate the word of God that God has given us. Appreciate him for the word that he has given us. The word that has been sustaining us from the 1st of January until today. And will sustain us until the end of this year. Let's just go before God and shout for joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
you are shouting for me. <clears throat> Shout for the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You, Lord. We may be seated just for a little while. Amen. I'm not going to take much of our time. I'm just going to narrate the story of creation. Hallelujah. Uh, part of it from Genesis chapter number one. Hallelujah. We see that God created the world. Hallelujah. And everything within it by the word of his voice. Hallelujah. Of his mouth. Hallelujah. And after God had created everything on earth, the land, the sea, the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, everything that is in the earth, he created men in his own image and in his own likeness. Hallelujah. And he said, go and multiply. He blessed them. Hallelujah. And said, go and be fruitful and multiply. Hallelujah. And have dominion. Hallelujah. Over everything that is on earth. That would be including the beasts, the animals on the earth. That would be including the waters on the earth. That would be including even the, the, the plantation, the vegetation that is upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. And today as we have come in this place today, we have come to celebrate the creation of God. Hallelujah. Through exploring much more into the gardening. Hallelujah into gardening, farming, and everything that is in connection with that. Hallelujah. And so at this particular time, in moment, I'm going to hand over this time to our sisters, Sister Lydia and Sister Ndapewa, to come and take us through the teaching on farming, gardening. Hallelujah. Shall we give them a round of applause as they come to minister before us this evening? Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Thank you so much, Pastor Anna. Thank you for that. Are we happy to be here today? Yes. Hallelujah. Um, I'm not going to be here alone. I will call Sister Ndapua. You must come here. Stand up. We just want to call uh, us. We are village girls. We grew in the village and we know how to dig and how to do those hard work. But we want to invite uh, Brother Leo to come and help us doing the explanations and uh, some of the talking. As, as we're going to... And, and I was just sitting there and I'm like, ah, we have too much of the experts in the house. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> I'm looking at Prof. And I'm looking at Melange over there. Sister Lala over there, and I see my two sisters there, my elders, and I'm like, all oh, these people are already farmers. <laughs> so we are blessed. Even my, my mommy over there, yeah. I think the house is well represented. The job will be very easy. Amen. Um, Sister Anna did a very good job with the praise and worship and prayer. So I believe we are blessed, and I believe that the Holy Spirit will lead us and help us and give us some insight about his creation. In fact, about his original intent and plan. We are going to go back to the garden. So I think I will, give, I will hand over to Papa Leo to start with the, 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 the presentation then we will be coming in to add some stuff. Okay. Thank Amen. Thank you. Okay, I, I was not actually planning to be part of the presentation or the insight, but somehow I find myself up here. 
But yeah, since I'm here, I might as well. <laughs> All right. Um, I think to begin with, before we even go into anything, maybe just to see how much people are aware or know or already might be aware of, what was the first job that God actually gave man? When he took him in Genesis and put him in the garden, what was the first assignment he gave him? To deal the garden, work the garden, look after it. Okay. All right. So it seems that we have people that definitely know what the first assignment they got. Before there was, you know, prayer, before there was fasting, before there was everything else, the first thing he told man to do was to work and to work the garden more specifically. Okay. Then we come, farming, this statement here. It just says, farming gardening can increase your life by up to 40 years. Is this true or false? Maybe by a show of hands. How many people think that is true? That farming, gardening, can increase your life by 40 years. How many people think that is true? Okay, that's quite a fair number. So there are those that believe otherwise. Okay, we'll, we'll come to it. We'll see what, where the truth lies. <laughs> Yes, statistically speaking, yes. <laughs> so when we start looking at, what do they call them, um, certain blue regions where people live long, and then they looked at certain markers and things, and they realized there were certain things in common, but we'll come to what those things were later on. Okay. Now, in the Bible, there's a verse that we all like to quote that says, um, you know, I shall not borrow. But you will see it in a short while and why I'm putting that there. Um, do we believe that the secret to being a lender to many nations is farming? And then there was silence in the house. The scrolls have not yet been opened. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, so we still have a split. That is good. We'll see. <laughs> huh? Farming or growing your own food is an act of faith. Why? We'll come to it in a short while. Everybody seems to know that one at least. Okay. You need to start big in order to win in farming. Is this true or false? So we have a very knowledgeable house. This is good. They know their Bible. All these things are from the Bible, eh? <laughs> now, the animals, the fish, the earth, everything will tell you, teach you, and show you what to do when it comes to farming. And gardening. Is this true? There was silence. Hmm. Okay, that is good. <laughs> we continue. Those who do not work, must they eat? So that one we all are very synonymous with, yeah? Because sometimes I know some of us start feeling guilty when we're at the traffic lights <laughs> and we see a young man that is able to work that can come and clean my garden, but then he chooses to rather beg, and then I start feeling guilty because, yeah, you know why. <laughs> but then I then think back to the Bible verse that says, if a man does not work, then he should not eat. Okay? But we'll come to it. Uh, Brother Munya, you can move to the next slide, where we go back to the very beginning, where she already started in the beginning. So now we continue from in the beginning. When God created everything and put man in the garden, he put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. That's what he told man to do. Work it, look after it, subdue the earth. 
subduing the earth meant that the, the earth is also going to fight back. <laughs> yeah? So he has to put in effort. He will put a seed, a weed will come there and try to take over what you have put there. Yeah? You put your tomato or your cabbage there, some pests will come and try and eat it. Okay, they were all created with their own purposes, but that's what the earth would do. But anyway, we continue. From this, we make the deduction by logical reasoning. <laughs> uh, man likes to think logically. So we say, okay, so we realize that one, Eden was actually a garden and not a bush. He did not put him in the bush of Eden. He put him in the garden. Now, at the bottom there, I put two pictures to contrast a bush and a garden. So we see the, on the one side, we have got a garden. It's neatly arranged. There is order, right? We see there is order. There's somebody actually taking care of what would have been chaos and rearranging it in a certain structure. Okay? On the other side, we have a bush. We've seen that African bush before. <laughs> yeah? When you start farming, the first time you will get your farmland, if you haven't already gotten that piece of land, it will look like that, bush. There will be thorn bushes, there will be snakes and scorpions in there, there will be everything in there. There will be just total chaos. Okay? But then God said he put you in there to work it and take care of it. Right? Now, at the same time, we deduce that Adam was actually a gardener or a farmer as his first job. <laughs> Original Adam's job was to be a farmer and a gardener. So he had to tend and look after this garden, protect it from anything that might want to come and destroy it, including those pests. Yeah? Now, if you're into animal farming, it includes those ticks and diseases that come to attack your animals. You were to guard and to protect all this. All right. Now, if we go back, um, actually, before, Munya, before you jump forward, there was um, one of the preachers that actually opened my eyes to a lot of things was more of a teacher, Miles Monroe. I think most people know him. He came to Namibia back in 1998. Uh, when he came in back in 19, I put the link there, but yeah, you can get the copy of the presentation later and you can watch it. Uh, basically, he was talking, ab he was in Namibia and he was talking about the issues in Namibia that yes, we have independence, but that is not enough to build a nation. You need land in order to build a nation because everything and all the blessings flow normally from the land, from the earth. That's where it all begins. So he was talking about that way back in 1998, saying, no, you need to look at your land policies. You need to make sure that the land goes back to the people. You need to bring back equity and so forth and so on. And you're going to see in a moment why that is actually important. Okay. So we're going to go to the next one. Okay. I, I'm sure some people have not seen these verses before. But you might have come across them, but then you maybe didn't contextualize necessarily what they were referring to. It's one of the reasons why, um, ladies, if you're married and your husband is approaching middle age, <coughs> There is this thing called a midlife crisis <laughs> that Adam experiences. And this is the time he tends to go astray and do some very ungodly things if you don't bring him back into check and remind him of his original assignment. So if you are a wife that has wisdom, one of the things you might do is you get him a piece of land somewhere you will get him a few goats and you put them there. You get a few chickens and you put them there. You get a few crops and you plant it there using your limited understanding and knowledge. 
And when Adam comes along at, in his midlife crisis, at first he'll be like, what are you doing? But then it will awaken something in Adam that you <laughs> would not have expected. All of a sudden, he will start to take over everything. All of a sudden, he will start naming all the animals again. You just said that is goat one, goat two, goat three, goat four, goat five. He will come and say, no, that's Eli over there, that's who over there, and that lamb is who and who. <laughs> that's what he would do. Even the trees, he would even name them. You would say by the big tree, oh, that's old faithful. <laughs> yeah? So the Adam in him will awaken. And all of a sudden, all those nonsense that he was thinking and the so-called midlife crisis will dissipate. All of a sudden, he's into this farming once again because you have brought him back to his original assignment. All of a sudden, he's focused. He's doing what Adam is supposed to do. But let's go back to where we are now. So we are saying start somewhere. Start small, learn as you go along. So we look at Zechariah 4, verse 10. It says, do not despise the small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, to see the plumb line of Zerubbabel's hand. So he is happy when he sees you start. It doesn't matter what it is. If you don't start it, God will not move. They say, when you begin something, when you commit yourself to do something, that is also the moment that providence moves to. Providence is the move of God. Okay? He will only move when you decide to get out of your couch, get up, go outside, and start something, no matter how small it is. Okay. So we are saying, do not despise those small beginnings. And then it goes on, Proverbs 20, verse 4. Those too lazy to plow in the right season will have no food at the harvest. I think this one is very obvious. It was like that in Ovamboland a long time ago. Hmm? If you didn't plan your mahangu on time, you will be sure there will be hunger in your homestead. If you didn't go plant that omakunde, <laughs> my friend, you'll only be eating mahangu porridge with salt. <laughs> eh? So if you didn't plant, you were in trouble. And then he continues, Proverbs 21, 5. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Young men especially, you love shortcuts. There is no shortcut eh, to glory. <laughs> there is no shortcut to greatness. <laughs> eh, you have to walk the walk, which means you have to put in the time. You have to sweat. You, you cannot say you are a farmer and you've never been pinched by a thorn. You've never dropped a brick on your toe. Huh? You've never been so dirty and covered in dirt, but you didn't care. <laughs> huh? And then you call yourself a gardener. I have seen some Western gardeners, you know, the way they dress to make sure they don't even get any dirt on themselves. Huh? But we are the type of gardeners, we are like, you know, the little kids, you send them out to play at the village, when they come back, you only see the eyes, basically. <laughs> That's how we go. Okay, so there is no shortcut. And this is one thing I always feel like as churches, we sometimes get wrong. We get too much into the, I receive, I receive, forgetting that we also need to do something. We also need to do something. Yeah? God, you are like a partner in this relationship with God. You are operating in the physical world. He is operating in the spiritual. 
and by his laws, he already said he will not come and interfere with what's going on in your physical world because he has put you there to change and work that world, to transform it and change it into what it is supposed to be. So that particular one there, that you need to do some good planning and put in some hard work in order to prosper at the end. Shortcuts of, yeah, I don't know, it's maybe the culture of also what we call the tenderpreneurs. You get one big deal and you blow up. But normally those that do that, what happens? The Bible is very clear. It says, riches that come quickly also do what? They also disappear. But those that come slowly, young men, they remain. They stay with you, and they will even carry on to the next generations. So this is really important when it comes also to being that person who's supposed to look after the Eden. Okay. Then we come to Ecclesiastes 11, 4 to 6. It says, those who wait for perfect weather will never plant seeds. Those who look at every cloud will never harvest crops. Because <laughs> they're like, no, it's not yet rain, so I'm going to sit back, relax, and yeah, let me wait for the rain to start. Okay. You don't know where the wind will blow, and you don't know how a baby grows inside the mother. In the same way, you don't know what God is doing or how he created everything. That's why it says, plant early in the morning and work until the evening. Because you don't know if this or that will succeed. They might both do well. They might. Hmm? But they might not. That's why one uh, Nigerian uh, preacher said, you know, Eden was watered by four rivers coming out of Eden, four rivers, they represent to him four streams of income. That you need to have at least four streams of income for you to be comfortable in life. Okay, by income, I'm not talking about now getting a job. I'm talking about things that you are working on on your own, where you are the boss like God intended. You are in charge. You're setting the direction. You're setting the pace. You're creating the vision. And you're building on it. You need to have at least four in order to be properly watered. Otherwise, you will run into trouble. So it might be maybe you have um, at the back of your car house, you add a small shack that you rent out. That 600 you get is money. It will pay put fuel in the tank. You might have in the other corner your Kalito garden where you grow your spinach and so forth. That is money you are going to take out of your salary to go and buy at certain shops. Let me not mention the names. <laughs> uh, but that was money that was going to leave your pocket. You were going to eat your seed. Uh, God gives what? Seed to who? To the sower and bread to who? Okay, so that salary you get is normally supposed to be your seed. <laughs> it's not for eating. It's meant to be your seed for sowing into your vision. It's just that most of us, when we get a job, what do we do? We, I made this mistake as well, so I'll, I'll not even hide. <laughs> huh? I, you get that nice salary, what do you do? Hey, that car looks nice, yeah. No, take my money. Give me the car. Hey, that couch looks nice. Give me that couch. Give me this. Give me that. Before you know it, even though you're earning a good income, you are still struggling because you've eaten your seed. <laughs> huh? So, from that particular verse, it, it's like, it, it's so loaded with so many things in there. It's really a fully loaded verse right there. It's just telling you that if you don't start and you're waiting for the perfect day, chances are that perfect day will never come. Hmm? 
the way you envision it, the way you imagine it, because you don't think like God. What you think might be the perfect day to God is not the perfect day. Yeah? You will get up one day and you will go stand there and then you shall be shocked when God says, actually, today is a perfect day. You look out and you say, but there is no clouds. There is no sign of rain. There is no this. There is no that. Why should I go and plow and put in the seed? Hmm? But everything he has already arranged. He just needs you to take a step forward. A step of faith. <laughs> yeah? Even the mustard seed <laughs> that grows into a mighty tree. It requires that the farmer who's looking at that little seed has faith that this will become a mighty tree. He has to put it in, when you put it in that ground, you're saying, I am now having faith that this will definitely transform into a tree. I am putting it here. I am covering it. And I am standing back. Hmm? They say nobody rejoices more than a farmer when it rains. More than a person who has seed in the ground. Because if you don't have seed in the ground, you'll be like everybody else on the street. What do they say? Oh my gosh, the rain has come to spoil my day. Hmm? Now I'm not even having my umbrella. I'm not having this. Now I'm going to get wet. Now the taxis are going to be doing the, what they like to do. Huh? You know when it rains, how taxis always become funny? <laughs> huh? That's all you're thinking about. But to the farmer, if he's walking, somebody who has seed in the ground, when he sees that rain and the first drop hits him, he starts smiling. And then you're like wondering, what's wrong with this man? Who walks in the rain smiling? and dancing all the way home while he's soaked. Huh? But you don't understand. <laughs> you don't see the other dimension. Okay. Uh, Munya, we can go to the next one. Okay. I guess I should hand over. I'm talking too much. I don't want to talk too much. Um, maybe somebody will now think, okay, you're talking about gardening. Um, I think we might have switched the, 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 the slides, the sequence, yeah. Because I think the benefit of, 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 of um, just, just go to the next slide. Yes, that, that Ndapewa wanted to share with us the rewards. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we in the season of planting? Is this the season of the showers of blessing? Hallelujah. We are, we are talking about gardening because we are in the season. And we want to empower ourselves with the skills and the rightful knowledge. Hallelujah. I just want us to share uh, uh, or look at the benefits of gardening. Uh, from the point of view, we want to look at the gardening as a form of hobby, something that we enjoy, something that gives you um, peace. Uh, I'm requesting the the, the IT to go to the next slide, please. Okay. Uh, we are saying that gardening is a therapeutic and less worries. It gives you, it's a form of therapy. I give myself, I have a lot of work throughout the day. When I come home, I'm tired and I will need self-care. So what do I do? I go to my garden. There are a lot of things that fill my mind throughout the day. Sometimes negative things. Sometimes things that I cannot even change. And that sometimes can give you stress. Or sometimes you do not know what to do. So as a garden, as a garden or a farmer, I go to my garden. I refresh myself with the work. 
I do, I grow or whatever, whatever I need to do that and that reduces my stress. I will not even feel how the day, for example, if I spend the whole day in the garden, I might not even feel how the time runs. By the end of um, the day, I, the time is already in the evening and I'm tired because I've been raking, I've been now uh, digging, I've been lifting up things. That also is a what? It's also therapy. And I also, I also enjoy also weeding, removing and looking at the best and, uh, uh, plants, that the ones that are doing good. I also re what? enjoy that. And I also look at harvest. Yeah, harvest is also a therapeutic. So by the end of the day, it's rewarding. Hallelujah. Um, eating health or healthy. Eating healthy is very important nowadays because we know um, we were, okay, we were supposed to be a combination of what is the benefit of eating health that will be covered by next day. I will not go deeper in that, but we all know that our brain, our physical health, or our mental development, or whatever the develop, form of any form of development is by eating health. Whatever you put in your body also sometimes manifests also outside. So gardening also gives us also an element of uh, uh, healthy living lifestyle. Hallelujah. So we also talk about spending time with family. Yeah? Sometimes we go from morning, everyone goes their own direction. Throughout, from Monday to Friday or Sunday, we have no enough time to come together. But if we organize ourselves, parents and kids and who, everyone in the house, and say, let's go and work in the garden. It's teamwork. The work will be fast. It's also knowledge that we are transferring. So this is our town uh, kids. We do not also spend time, enough time. Also, at the village sometimes, um, it, 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 it might be easier at the village because our kids in town, they, have no, they don't like village also. But if we create time to transfer that knowledge here, if we have like a small garden at the backyard of our houses, we can also, or we have a piece of land and we go together. We are transferring the skills and we are teaching our kids what to do when we are no longer with them or if we want them to develop in the career of Adam that we were talking about here. Hallelujah. Says that the next slide says that teach your children patience, faith, long suffering, self dependence and more that and more. Ne? So we are trans we we it's like we are, I already said about that. Um, we, we, the parent, the Bible tells that uh, teach the child what they need to know, and tomorrow they will not regret. It's type of, of training. We are training our children. We teach them faith. We teach them f uh, uh, long suffering. As uh, Papa Leo said, that it's not an easy work. It's not something that is of a shortcut. It's something that you need to plan. It's something that needs hard work. It needs strength. It needs diligence. So we are transferring the skills to our young ones or our generation. It's profitable work and earning. We understand that we are in the world. Uh, this world is also... Um, we. We experience a lot of crisis. We have in the season also where we experience hardship, economic um, hardship, for example, the time of COVID-19, we know. And we are all affected. And we know that, OK, it's not easy. It's not easy. So profitable in terms of that we are earning. We do not also depend on salary alone, but we also generate an income for ourselves. For example, selling. Ne? We are also empowering the rest of the nation, eating healthy, but for ourselves as, as well, but we are also benefiting by earning some extra income. 
Hallelujah. Form of uh, good exercise. We need to exercise. Yeah, we talked about hobby. So gardening is not only um, a hobby or just a work that was assigned to us. It's also a form of exercising. So that earlier was talking about a difference between a bush and then a garden. Well planned and at the end of the day we can see beautiful space. So we need to do what? We need to clear the space. We need to clean and we need to also to what rake, we need to lift, we need to what? Do all that hard work. At the end of the day, we are tired and we are saying we have also spent our energy in good work. Hallelujah. So I also advise that we need to find type of exercises in gardening. Keep your mind active. Yeah? So we are saying that there are so many distress nowadays. We have a lot of experience that we go through throughout the day. We hear a lot of negative news and we also what uh, come to the garden it refreshes your mind it's type of uh, refreshes your mind and then you say that you get to see and appreciate the glory of god you're getting back to nature we are talking about nature the garden the beginning and we talk about how god want us to prosper so we are getting out to nature where we get um, fresh air. For example, we need vitamin D. We talk about getting outside the house. Sometimes we spend inside the whole time. So we need to go out and also receive such benefits. Hallelujah. I, I want us to stand so that at least I see some people are bored. Yeah, can we stand and we just sing a song? My hands are blessed. With the blessing of the Lord, with the blessings of the Lord, my hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. With the blessings of the Lord, with the blessings of the Lord, anything I touch, anything I touch, must surely be blessed. Must surely be blessed. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. With the blessings of the Lord. My life, is blessed. My life is blessed with the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. My life is blessed. My life is blessed with the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. Anything I touch, anything I touch, I'll surely be blessed. I'll surely be blessed. My life is blessed. The blessings of the Lord. The blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we going to do the gardening? Are we going to earn extra income? Are we going to eat healthy? By the grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You can just take up this, the, the, the previous slide. Go up. I'll try to make it easy. Uh, I mean, I'll try to make it fast for the sake of time. The rewards are many. I mean, the power really mentioned a whole lot of all benefits and the rewards that we get out of, out of uh, gardening. Obviously, that at an individual level, at us where we are. But if you take it to a national, to take it back to the national level, people talked about GDP and all these kind of things. You talk about growing the nation, the economy, Nowadays, you, I was talking the other day to prove that we are going as far as importing onion from other country. It's really not good for us and we need to work hard to stop such things. Okay? Yes, the work is tedious, it's heavy, it's dirty, we have heard about that. We, there was a link there on the first point that says BBC made a study. It says gardening may be the secret to living to 100. This is a study actually that was done in Japan, in Japan, and they concluded that Japanese women especially, they can add 40 more years to their lives because they spend so much time in the garden. If you look at those videos, you see women at 80 something, climbing trees, doing all kinds of things, and you'll be like, what? 
80. No, it can't be. But the way they are so active. But you look at some of us, by the age of 60, you can't even walk from there to there because the, the body is not used to. And some of the country, they actually were saved, especially from COVID, because the body is, is fit, right? So it, it was a study that was made. So it's very true that it can add the lifestyle, your mindset, because if you're living a healthy life, your mind is keeping positive and exercising the right ways you have a, a very good chance of adding more years to your life. Scripture says the Lord will open the heaven, the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hand. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. It, it's, uh, it was mentioned already that the scripture where it actually came from is from us producing the land. And out of doing that, money will come and then you will be able to lend to many. Obviously one will think, no, I will just do these other businesses and whatever. But back in the day, ancient of time, history tells us that businesses actually started from growing products or growing produces. That's where the other careers like an accountant came in because now they needed an accountant to come and ca uh, count the produce and end and end and end. Most of these things and the careers that we have today, they actually started back in the land. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receive the blessings. Very straight, Know well the condition of your frogs and give attention to your heads, for riches do not last forever. And does a crown endure to all generations? I think all these things were mentioned before. Go back again to the upper one. Upper, go up. Okay. Now, the whole thing of gardening is really, apart from being a hobby, apart from it gives you. You know, it keeps your mind active in the right direction. It, it's really food. The culture of eating vegetable, we need to create it. And, and, and it different kind of vegetables that, that we all like. I came to realize that we all have different variety depending on where we're coming from. Nigerians like their specific ones. The Zambians like their specific ones. I, I, I get some even seed. Like the other day, this guy gave me seeds. He said, this is, I even forgot the name. This is, it, no, it's not chamolia. It's something else. It's, it's, it's something funny. I've never seen it. This is very nice. Please try to grow this. I need to find where I put that seed. Just one seed. <laughs> but he said he, he wants that. So we, we all have, where we are coming from, we all have different kinds of, you know, Delicacy that we really like and we need to, to, you go to OK, you go to other shops, they don't have all these kind of things. But if you can have like a small area at the back of your house and grow it and you eat what you like to, you grow what you eat, basically. So now there is, where do I start? Where you start is really backyard. We are talking about just small, small. We are not talking about big land. We know big land in Namibia. We know how land is very expensive in Namibia right but all of us have got like a little space yes this is not now just you can actually think into other concepts maybe gardening is not your thing or you don't really have space but you can think of other concepts where you can actually generate something for yourself we should not just be christian we pray very good but let us do the do as well as we pray there is there is there is a scripture where we say it the lord will direct your steps the first question is, what step are you making? Is there something for God to direct? Or just, God, may you direct my steps, and you are sleeping. Which steps? We need to start something. Whatever that is in your space, in your domain, that you'll be able to do, do that. Okay? Now, if you don't have here in Vintuk, if you are from the village like me, villages, we all have space. And if you cannot do it for yourself, do it for your family, do it for your parents. They need it. Times are changing. Things we don't understand. If you read social media, they have all kinds of stories. I don't know what are they calling it, all these propagandas. You never know. Tomorrow you're saying that things are poisoned. That, why don't you now grow the things that are not poisoned? We are, still, we are still going back to buy from others. So we need to change our mind. 
started the village something small, your parents can eat on top of that. They can make a living for themselves. Then you don't have to, every month you have to send money home. How do you do it at the backyard? Maybe you are renting. It's not your house. It is not now easy to just plant things in someone's house. Take tires or bags. If you go to OK or any other, what is the place where they, the bakery? The bakeries are all having those bags where they, they keep flowers and whatever. You take those bags. When I started, I actually started in bags because the place was very rocky, 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 like I couldn't dig anything. You put in the bags, you fill it with sand, you water it, you put some manure, you add your seed, it will grow. Just at the back there, instead of now taking $300 to go and buy food, that $300 you can keep it and buy something which you cannot produce, and then you eat from your own garden. Why the bags are bad or tires? If you can go to places where they fix tires, you can get tires. When you put, when you plant in tires, the soil remains moisturized for a very long time. If you put it on the, f on the, on the ground, the heat, it dries faster. So in bags and tires, actually, it remains um, more um, wet, moisturized for, for longer. And it actually helps the, the plants to grow. So you decide what do you like to, to eat, what is that you, you like. So in the process, you save time. And then if you are renting, like I said, the, your bags are portable. When you move, you move with your plants. If you leave your plant there, you can't move with them. Right. So that small area can give you return in terms of your food and also in terms of little profit. We all need an extra money. If you like shoes, if you like uh, that heel, work for it and buy a heel. <laughs> Go up again. Which one is this one? Go up, not down, go up. Oh, you are going down. Go, go. Previous slide. Let me put it that way. Previous slide. Previous slide. Previous slide, again. I just want to make sure that we have not left anything. Where do I get the knowledge? Eight shades of days. Somebody was saying, you know, before all these books that we have, who taught those people those books that they wrote? Before the first person got a PhD, who taught that person to come up with all these things? You, you understand? Before so many things, where did the knowledge came from? It is the wisdom of God and the direction of the Holy Spirit. So that is number one. So when you start... So most of us, we're saying, I've not done uh, courses on agriculture, I've not gone to school and whatever. Yes, but sometimes we learn from your mistakes. As you've done this, you've realized that, oh, this was actually not the right time to plant A, B, C, D. And that is the very best teacher because we have experience. Nobody will come. They said, a man with knowledge is not, um, what is the word? It's not at the mercy of the person with experience. You, have, you know it. You, 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 you have done it, you failed at it, you know. But sometimes I've read it, and I don't really know, I haven't experienced it. I will tell you, depending on what I've read. So you can try and fail. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? So from that knowledge, you do what you do. Um, God will show the way once you make step. Like we're saying, take a step, God will direct. There are a lot of fellow farmers, you can have friends. We, we talk to a lot of people, we ask, how do you do it? The man in front there, the, that they ping it there, is a very good guy when it comes to trees, fruit trees. We sit with him most of the time after church. That they ping it, some of our trees died, what didn't we do? <laughs> then you will come and tell us, no, you, should, you were supposed to do A, B, C, A, like this. So we are learning, tomorrow we do it better. There are gardening centers. There is lots of information on YouTube, Google. We say Google now is the best teacher. Even if you're online, you have not gone to university, you can get your degree from online. Job 12, 7 verse 12 is a long scripture, but it's very good scripture. But ask now the beast, and they shall teach thee, and the fowl of the air, and they shall tell thee. Or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee. 
and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee, Who knoweth not in all this that the hand of the Lord has wrought this? In those hands is the soul of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind. Do not, do not, um, not the air try wood, and the mouth taste his meat, with the ancient is wisdom, and in length of days understanding. God have it all. He will direct. Now, let's come down. Down. Now you can go down. Now, oh, yeah. Um, there is um, one thing that I want to add. I'll come back now. I will leave a little bit of gardening. It's something that I want to share that I've experienced in our country. I'm not going to. You can go to the, to the other slide. I'm not going to blame our education system, but I want to make a comment. Because it's something that I've, I've cancelled a lot of young people. Not one, not two, not five, many. You have your grade 12, life happens, it happens. You have not pro probably find opportunities to study and to go to, to universities. For so many reasons, it's not one you can, it's not to blame anybody for that. Now, I've met a lot of young, especially ladies, I want to speak more to ladies, I don't see a lot of them, but it, it, it's a discussion we had several times in a youth group because it, it, it's close to my heart. The person will come to you, most of their problem is that I want to serve God, but now I lost my job or I don't have a job, but I'm staying with this man. Whether he have a child, she have a child with him or not, but the point is that he's the one who's supporting me. What do I do? It, it, it's very much common and it's a lot. Now this other time, this person said, okay, um, it, I think it's uh, one day after the youth, they came, we spoke, and, and he said, no, I've, I lost my job after corona and end and end now, I don't know what to do. So I begin to speak and ask, what can you do with your hands? Nothing. Can you do hair? No. Can you make clothes? No. Can you cook to bake? No. Can you, I, I tried anything I could think. She can't do anything. Why? Because in her mind she was educated to say, get your grade 12 or get whatever education, go get a job and work for someone. And that's it. Now you are, life is happening. You probably now have a child. All you want, the only thing, the only career that now some of young people, they can think of, I must make, must meet a man. I must meet a man who can sustain my life. It is very, very, very common. It's a lot. And why am I saying we need to educate our children is that if life does not end where you want it to end, and it's very a lot, most of the time it's not every time that everybody has got a brain for mathematics. If you give me mathematics, problems will happen. If, 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 seriously, people have got different gifts. So that is why it is important, and especially our children that are growing in town, they, they can't do much. And even more for those families that have more, have enough money. Why? Because there is someone to cook, there is someone to clean, there is someone to do everything, somebody who can make their clothes. But if you, you know that, okay, gardening is not our thing, maybe get a sewing machine, try something. One day if job ends, especially now world is going artificial intelligence, machines will replace many of us. What are we going to do? You come to work, if you go to FNB, most of their tell, they need few because they want people working on doing things online. They don't want physical people anymore. So because most of us, even with your, 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 your B degree, you become redundant. So what are we saying? Let us do things with our hands. Somebody will still want cakes. And the machine may not, they will come to the machine making cakes, obviously. <laughs> but, but until we get there, at least we must get more skills for our children. Sign them up for projects. You will, they will, they will make people make, we, the other time we were looking at this guy, a, a millionaire. He started in, in cutting grasses. 
And in New York, they think he's the, he now have trucks and all kinds of things. He started just by cutting grass. So let us not despise some of these things because we think there's no virtue, there's no name, there's no big thing. I'm doing this kind of work, but it, it really helped. Now going back to this lady, I ask her, where are your parents? Then she said, my father basically have a farm nearby Rehobot. And he's working for the Ministry of Agriculture. And he's actually in charge of all the seeds and the trainings and all these things, that whole site. And I'm like, my sister, what are you doing in Vintuk? What are you doing here? You are crying, looking for a job. But she said, I've never planted anything in my life. So you start with YouTube. I said, you have a phone, right? Yes. What are you using your, your phone for? Just YouTube and, and, I mean, just Facebook and Twitter, Instagram and, and all these things. Change it. Put things on how to grow this and that and that and that. Because you have time. If I had time to do this thing, I will do it with all my energy. I know it's not easy. I do it probably one Saturday. So my return is not that much because you don't have time. But you are not working. You are looking for a job. I said, if I were you, I would not look for a job. I will join my father. Now you want to be in Vintuk, being abused by guys because you need to make a living. You, you get what I'm saying? So we need to, to re-educate ourselves. Money does not have a, a color. Eh? If it comes from vegetable, so what is the problem? It's money. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Somebody put some little, these are my little garden, these are my tires. Like where I'm planting, it's really, really like rocky, things can grow. So I collected a number of tires. If you look at this picture, those are carrots growing in tires, a lot of them. Or many other stuff sometimes I just put in tires and things are growing. And, and, and Saturdays we all go spend the whole day there. And one of my friends said, I think you guys are doing this thing so that you know where your husbands are. <laughs> I'm like, but what is another good opportunity to spend good time with your family? Like she said, Monday to Friday, everybody goes with their own life. You don't know where people are. You come home, you sleep. Tomorrow, everybody goes. At least you have one day where as a family and children, you, you run around together. You, even if maybe the reward is not in million, because one of, my, one, of my, one of my boys at home said, but seriously now, with all this work that we do, every time we are tired, how much exactly are we making? <laughs> because the whole day, and, and, and I'm one of those, you will not sit, you will not sit, you work. And I'm, these things, how much exactly are we making? Because this is just too much. Maybe I said one day we will have something that we can celebrate, but in the a, in a, in a meantime, do not despise the small beginning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go, let's move, let's move. Let me, I, I, I talk too much. Let, let's move. Move? Okay. This, this table, we can share. I can put it on some group. It's really just showing the different plants that you can... You can it, this is for Namibia. It was made for Namibian gardeners. What can you plant in what season, in which month? Because they, they, they are plants that are good in winter. Some are good in summer. Some are good with whatever soil you should be with, things like that. So you need to identify where am I? What can do well during this time? Like now we are in what month? We are now in October. You can have carrots. Carrot is throughout. You can have pumpkins. You can have lots of so many ways. The, the green, I think it's where you planting and when to harvest. It, it, you, it, you follow. That's what I'm saying. We don't need all to have got degrees in education. We just have to have our information and it tells us what to do. Now if you have a village, and most of our children, because they want to be in town where there is Wi-Fi, if you plant a lot of fruit trees, they have learned from Brother Ipinge. You put a lot of different fruit trees. When it's holiday and say, let's go home, people say, oh, there's some bananas at home. Let's run. They would want to go. But if there's nothing, there's no Wi-Fi, there's no electricity, there's no this, what, there's no food, what will attract young people to go home? It's a strategy, we need to think beyond now, beyond what we, 
we could think as we grow up. Um, next, these are just scriptures I think that we have looked at before. He will also send you rain for the seed to sow, you sow in the ground. And the food that comes from the land will be rich and plentiful. In that day, your cattle will graze in broader meadow. The Bible is full of scriptures to support that this is a will of God for us to. Let us not be idle. I like to ask my children, when you are watching all these small, small programs, like these families that they, what do you call it? They are li 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 YouTube families. Now the whole day you are following a family of who, who, who. You are, you, do you know that you are giving them a lot of money? Don't you have to think how to make your own? When will they watch you? Think of something. So we, we should change a lot of things in the way we do things. And we should start in the house of God. We should start in the house of God. We get too comfortable. We get too comfortable. And it's like the moment you have learned how to pray. It's like sleep. You know how to pray. But there are principles in the Bible. And principles, they don't fail. Whether you are the most person who knows the whole Bible or the one who knows how to pray. Certain principles are principles. And the principle will work. Whether you know the whole scriptures or you don't know. Principles are principles. Let us balance everything. Let us not just be... Okay, I will not use that word. Okay, so I think that, that, that what the farmers have prepared in short, or the gardeners, the farmers to be, <laughs> the aspiring farmers. So let's, let's maybe discuss. Um, we don't own the whole knowledge. Like I said, we are also just in the process of making lots of mistakes. We are learning, and we can maybe two, three comments, someone to add a few things that we have left. Um, yeah, we can actually just discuss maybe one or two few questions. We, like I said, we have more experts in the house. Um, thank you very much for listening to us. Gardener Mildred is there. And Professor. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the midst of farmers. <laughs> My sister there is a very big farmer. <laughs> the reason I decided to come to Namibia when I got the United Nations job, was that they said, you are now posted to Namibia. So I took a map of Africa, and I looked at Namibia, the natural features. And I saw a lot of sheep over the country. I said, ah, I'm going to Namibia. I will be a sheep farmer there. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when I came to this country, and I was asking people, I need a piece of land to farm. They thought I was crazy because it was just close to independence and land was not an issue that you start discussing in public. Anyway, let me end it there. I struggled to get a piece of land. I mean, struggled. 2000 and something, I, I managed to get a piece of land in uh, Omataku. And when I got the piece of land, I was to fence it. And I traveled to the US. I bought farmers' things. My daughters went around and said, My daddy wants, wants to be a farmer. So they bought me boots and all kinds of things. I came back. The chief that was giving me land died in an accident, and that set it back for another six years. But I didn't give up. Then I finally got the piece of land. I tried to fence it, a huge piece of land. But lo and behold, 
I met another obstacle. I'm just saying this because you have to keep trying and try until you get to your des that destination. And I discovered that for me to farm that piece of land, I had to spend one whole day to travel to the place, maybe do one day of farming, and then travel back the other day. So what days do I have? If I go on Friday, it means I cannot come to church. So that also became impossible. I said, okay, let me hire somebody to be helping me there until I am completely retired. I keep retiring, ladies and gentlemen. I've retired, I've retired 10 times from my jobs. So I finish retiring, then I'm hired again. But I will soon retire eh, because I now have a farm. So, so I employed somebody to be my farm manager in Omatako. And he said, Pastor, oh, I cannot continue to tell you what he did to me. He apologized profusely for stealing my money and wasting my resources. And I forgive him. Long and short, one day after church, I had Brother Liu and uh, his wife, they were talking about farm. And I said, where can I find a farm? The Lord bless you, Sister Lydia. <laughs> I asked Brother Liu. Brother Liu said, talk to her. And then she said, okay, I will introduce you to somebody. Then he introduced me to somebody. Today I have a farm. In Gru oh. I've farmed it now for almost two years and it has given me a lot of joy. On the farm, if you are a Christian, your faith, your belief, your knowledge of God is tested. Whether you have faith, whether you can persevere, whether you can endure, whether you can glorify God, whatever happens, all will be tested in the farm. And until you are a successful farmer, I don't think you can call yourself a successful Christian. I have about four hectares of land and it was planted with maize and mapunde and then by the side I have chicken, I have pigs, I have goats. <laughs> but listen, and everybody was saying, huh, that green place, because my farm was the only green area around. Everybody was saying, ah, that green area. Ladies and gentlemen, one day, I got to the farm and the green area became completely brown because the temperature dropped to below two degrees one night. Everything just dried up. So I got to the farm, I saw it brown and I said, ah, you used to be green, now you are brown. Glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. What am I saying? You will see all of that in the farm. I had chicken. One day I got there, four or five chickens, ten of them died, and I said, glory be to God. But by and large, the farm gives me joy that is difficult to measure. I will sit down with Bishop on the farm, and we start looking at trees, <laughs> praising God. Hallelujah. We named the, 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 the farm is on a mountain, and I call it Mount Zion. Hallelujah. And my good friend is Zion. <laughs> so, I want to encourage every one of us, try your hand at the farm. You can even farm in your sitting room. Buy a small bucket, like my sister said, fill it with sand, put a seed inside it and watch it grow. You start with that, you'll be encouraged to move outside. Little by little by the grace of God. When I stop going to, if you see me in the morning, there's a tie. <laughs> I always put on tie because of the nature of my work. 
and I tell God, God, I thank you for this tie. But when I start wearing tie, I become a free man on my farm. Hallelujah. Farm is good. It gives you joy. It gives you hope. And like Jesus said, and I, this is the last thing I want to say. When you are wondering how it will be done, when you pray and you are expecting answer to your prayer, and you are about getting frustrated because you don't know how that will happen. It's because you have not tried being a farmer. Because Jesus said, a farmer goes to the farm, puts tills the soil, put a grain of uh, wheat in the, in the soil, and covers it, and goes back home. Then the thing starts growing. The farmer gets there. The farmer knows that the seed is growing, it will, it will soon uh, uh, develop, begin to bear fruit, and when it is time for harvest, it's, go, it's going to take its sickles and start harvesting. The farmer does not know how this thing happens, but this farmer is full of expectation that the seed is going to grow, and that one seed is going to multiply to 1,000 seeds. How that happens, he doesn't know. What I'm trying to say, you have come tonight to pray. Whatever you are praying for, know that it is going to happen. Don't worry how it is going to happen, because only God knows how it's going to happen. The Lord will answer our prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. If you now see the joy in Professor, the other time I was, I, was, I was telling Baba Leo, the joy that Prof and the excitement at his age, and he never gave up with all the trials and the setback. One, one would say, calculate all the money that I've lost in the trying of this thing. This is the money, it's too much. Now I must try again. Because really setting up a small garden is not cheap. And it's not where you get money tomorrow. You might even work for five years just putting in your little money, your little money. If you are lucky, you have money to go get a loan, it's fine. But if you just do your one step at a time until you get there, you eventually will get there. But my point is this. I don't think in this whole house there is any one of us at his age. But he said for two years now. But some of us are 20 something. Some of us are 30 something, 40 something, 50 something. The time was yesterday. But if we missed yesterday, the time is today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I like to talk to a lot of to young people. And I said, if gardening, planting things, you don't have the patience, just forget about shortcuts. Find your purpose and find what gives you that joy. He said it gives him joy. You need to go to sit down and say, what exactly makes me joy? If you're a young person and you like gadgets and you like developing things, be there, start um, programming some games or whatever. Do what, in, what brings you joy. At the end of the day, it gives you your freedom, financially, and so many things. We young people need to come on the board and say, this is what my parents have done, these are their struggles. Instead of giving them headaches, come and say, where can I come in to help? What can we do? And this is not just for the young people. It's for really all of us. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless us. Uh, my partners would have to give their closing remarks. I'm done. Okay. Um, in closing, I think another dimension we need to look at, um, I think a lot of us will tend to look at um, what can I say? The whites, let me just put it as it is. And we will say that their children have had a good start. 
a good foundation. <clears throat> and then we say, no, give us the land so that we can also do something. And then we go there, and then we realize how much work it is. And then we start, you know, turning away, like, no, this is not for me. This is just too much work. This is so much. But we are told that we must endure, that we must get used to long suffering. The long suffering is not only referring to certain situation, it's also referring to how hard are you really willing or wanting something, that you're willing to endure something that people will call hardship. In fact, you can turn that hardship into joy. While you are digging, you're singing. <laughs> yeah? you, you find that sometimes when you go to the farm, the kids will even take their Bluetooth speakers, they'll put it there, put their music, and they'll be busy digging, weeding, doing what, it's like they've t found a way to turn it into a source of joy, what was once a source of pain and, you know, what they viewed as labor. So it's the same with us, and most of us, we are not doing this for ourselves. The Bible says a man who does not leave anything for his children to inherit is wicked. It is written. So most of the time, when you build a, a small farm, even um, if you don't have a farm this side, if you have a farm in the northern areas, in the southern areas, Mariento and so forth, Katima, wherever it is that you have your communal lands, if you invest the time and you build up that farm, it will take you years. It will not show fruits immediately. You cannot plant a mango tree today and expect to eat a mango tree to, I mean, to eat a mango tomorrow. And this is the problem with the current generation. Because of Instagram, Facebook, they have become an instant generation. So they don't know that you need to plant the seed and you need to wait for it to grow. They want to plant the seed and tomorrow they come and they want the mango. It doesn't work that way. So this thing that we're doing is intergenerational. Because this thing that you build, be it in Mariento where your homeland is, be it in Katima, wherever your farm is, that infrastructure you put up, that foundation that you put in place, that knowledge that you impart to your children, when you are no longer there, they will continue to build on that and they will do even greater things because you're not doing it just for yourself. At the end of the day, it's for your own children and your children's children and your children's children. Just look at the white farmers. That farm passes the, from one child to the next, to the next, to the next. And they don't struggle, they don't stress, they don't look for scholarships even. If government says no scholarship, they say whatever. We continue. We are not deterred, we just continue because they have built that foundation. That's basically what I wanted to add. <laughs> In my conclusion, the remarks, um, self-care, it involves mind, it involves body, it involves um, uh, emotions, it involves uh, all areas of our lives. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to also to um, learn the knowledge, communicate to someone, how do I uh, take care of myself in this area? Because there are so a lot of um, mental uh, illness, that are affecting all, all of us, or most of us, and we do not share. Part of that is, is that we do not find what do we enjoy, or what can we enjoy in life. For example, we talked about gardening is part of therapy. We need to take care of ourselves, we need to eat healthy, we need to take care of every area of our lives. So the Bible also in the song that we, saw, we sang earlier, it talks about our hands are blessed, but we need to take 
the step of faith and we need to take action. Even faith without action, it's, 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 it's dead. So we need to start and we want to thank God even in this very season. We are in the very season of where we are receiving showers of blessings. So let's go and prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Anna, oh. Uh, thank you very much. I don't know whether it's time for thinking, but I just thought perhaps you know, we have learned quite a lot. But for continuity's sake, can I suggest that we create a WhatsApp group, you and ladies and uh, Tatelio? Can you start up a WhatsApp group for us? I'm sure you might be in any other WhatsApp groups, but just for the church, so that at least, you know, we also learn and share experiences and, you know, even know when to go and buy. Instead of me going to spa, I have to go and buy from here, you know, that kind of thing. So that's what I just wanted to say. Let's put this into, into action. Amen. One suggestion. The Spirit of, Spirit of God is saying, after we have motivated each and every one of us to be farmers, and we start planting and harvesting, there must be an avenue for us to market our product. The Spirit of God is saying to us, why don't you think of a farmer's market? The first time that I saw a farmer's back market was in Philadelphia, in the United States of America. That's where farmers bring their little things. It's a big metropolis. But after all those big, big shops, you see that open market which allows farmers to come in and sell. And thank God for Facebook these, these days. It can easily be marketed. Let's think of it. The mechanics of it we can think about and work out later. But I just throw it out because we are in the house of God. And I know it, it is possible for us to have a farmer's market so that you are encouraged to produce because there is a market for your products. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Farmers market days are very much possible. Amen. Hallelujah. It is good to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is good to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is good to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is good to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is good to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Indeed, it is good to praise the Lord. Amen. They say a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. Hallelujah. Are we going to implement what we have been taught today? Hallelujah. We praise the name of the living God. We are just going to come to a place of praying. Amen. Just to round up what we have been taught today. Thank you so much, Sister Lydia, Brother Leo, Menda Pewa. We thank you so much. May God continue to bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, today, as I was thinking about today's teaching, I was taken to the Garden of Gethsemane. And I was looking at it in the context that it was a time where Jesus' ministry was at the peak Hallelujah. The word of God says in Luke 22, verse 54, that it was a time after Judas Iscariot came and kissed Jesus, and then the soldiers came and arrested the hands of, of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today we want to pray for our hands. Hallelujah. You see, the, the soldiers thought they had done much, they had achieved much by tying the hands of Jesus. But Jesus is unstoppable. And Jesus Christ flows within us. 
because he is within us. Hallelujah. Christ is in us. If you have Christ in you, shout hallelujah. Today we want to pray, hallelujah, and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, whatsoever is tying my hands that I may not progress, may it be broken in the name of Jesus. May we begin to pray. Father, we come unto you this evening, hallelujah, and we say, Father, in the name of Jesus, our hands are blessed. Our hands are an express image of Christ Jesus. In your word, we have seen that through the hands of Jesus, he healed the sick. He restored the blind sight. Hallelujah. He raised the dead. Hallelujah. And when the enemy came to attack Jesus, he tied the hands of Jesus. But by the resurrection power in the hands of Jesus, he came out of the situation. Hallelujah. Today we are committing our hands before your throne of grace. And we say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, whatsoever is tying our hands, let it lose its hold. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we pray that we are receiving the freedom in Christ Jesus by the blood of Jesus. Father, we stretch our hands unto you this evening. And we say, Lord God, may our hands be blessed. May whatsoever we shall touch be blessed. May our hands be anointed in the name of Jesus. My Lord, my God, whatsoever we shall touch shall prosper. Whatsoever we shall touch shall flourish. Whatsoever we shall touch shall multiply. In the mighty in the name of Jesus, my Lord, my God, we come unto you and we say, pour your anointing in our hands right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we bless your holy name tonight. We thank you, Abba Father, because you are empowering us. In this place, you are empowering our hands. My Father, my God, in the name of Jesus, we just want to come before your throne of grace with hearts full of thanksgiving. In the mighty name of Jesus, may our lives be transformed. May the works of our hands be established. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to, to, to declare this evening one more declaration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, Abba Father, we declare and decree that all the works of our hands are established tonight in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever I shall touch, it shall flourish. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray for your hands right now. My Lord, my God, we pray for our hands. May our hands receive your blessings, O oh God. May our hands be established in the name of Jesus. According to your promise in the book of Deuteronomy 16 verse 15. My Lord, my God, we pray this evening. We speak it into life. We speak it into our lives. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, may your word become flesh in our lives. Abba, Father, in the name of Jesus, may we begin to see our lives fruitful. May we begin to see the works of our hands fruitful. May we begin to see the flourishing, oh God, of every place that we are positioned. In the mighty name of Jesus, my Lord, my God, we come unto you. And we say, Father, we are stepping into our dominion mandate, the place that you have taken us from the beginning. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we may dominate, that we may tend the garden. My Lord, my God, in the name of Jesus, may our gardens flourish tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray even for our youth, according to Zephyr. 
Zephaniah 3 verse 16. May their hands not slake in the name of Jesus. May whatever their hands find to do flourish. May they do it diligently in the name of Jesus. My Lord, my God, we pray, we pray this evening. And we say take total control over our lives as we come before your throne of grace. Father, we receive the blessings of the living God. We thank you, King of Kings. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the knowledge you have released in this place. Father, we declare and decree that it shall not fall to the ground, but it shall be used in our lives, and you will bless, Lord God, us through the knowledge that we have received. My Father, my God, we bless you. We thank you even for avenues that have been opened. Oh God, the, the divine inspiration that you have given us in this place. My Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Shall we clap a mighty clap offering unto the living God? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for rain before we go home. Hallelujah. According to Ecclesiastes chapter number 11 from verse 3. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 3. The word of God says, If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls, it falls to the south or to the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it shall lie. Hallelujah. These are the divine principles that we are being given. Some things that we cannot change. Hallelujah. If the clouds form, they should definitely uh, produce the rain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for rain tonight. Hallelujah. So, shall we raise our voice today and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, as the clouds are forming in Namibia, May they release rain. Shall we begin to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we come unto you. We raise our hands before your throne of grace. We raise our voices unto you. And we say, Father, may the clouds as they are forming, O oh God, begin to release rain to bless the land of Namibia. My Lord, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray this afternoon and say, Father, any winds that are scattering the clouds, may they be scattered themselves in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you may receive the showers of blessings, the showers of the, of, of the rain of the living God, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the earth may be able to yield uh, from its ground in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call unto you this evening, and we say, Father, breathe upon the heavens of uh, upon Namibia and let, let the rains flow in this nation. Let the rains flow in this nation, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. My Lord, my God, we trust in you. And we come unto you, Almighty Father. We release the word in the atmosphere and say, Father, as we have released the word, let it begin to manifest, Father. We call for the rains upon Namibia. We call for the blessings of the living God upon Namibia in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you omnipotent God. Thank you Abba Father. In Jesus name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the living God. Amen. I'm just going to pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Father we thank you tonight. We thank you for all that you have done in this place. We thank you for your presence in this place oh God. We thank you, Almighty Father, for the knowledge that you have fed your people with. My Lord, my God, in the name of Jesus, we say today, what then shall we say unto the Lord except to say thank you, Father? We come unto you, Almighty Father, even according to your word, that we should give thanks always, for it is the will of the living God for our lives. Father, we thank you with all our hearts this evening. And we say, Father, as we come unto you with hearts that are full of thanksgiving, may you begin to multiply ideas. May you begin to multiply the works of our hands in the name of Jesus. 
The word of God says, I was young and now I am old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging for bread. Father, as you are teaching us in this place, we shall never beg for bread. Our children will not beg for bread because you are going to bless us. Father, we thank you tonight. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we are just going straight into our giving. And we are going to draw a scripture from Deuteronomy, chapter number 15, from verse 11. Whenever we are conducting a women's meeting, we always remember the poor. Hallelujah. The word of God says, For the poor will never cease from the land. Therefore, I command you, saying, you shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor, and to your needy in your land. Hallelujah. We are going to open our hearts today as we remember those that are in need. Hallelujah. I want us to take our offerings right now and commit them before our Father. Hallelujah. Let's raise our offering before the living God. And just wave it before the living God. Father, we thank you. As we are remembering the poor. Father, you said he who gives to the poor lends to God. Father, as we come unto you this evening, we are lending to you, almighty Father. We are remembering those that are in need. And we say, Father, may their lives be blessed. Remember even those that are going to give tonight. My Lord, my God, may you increase their coffers in the name of Jesus. May their lives be blessed, O oh God. Father, we thank you for this offering that we are bringing unto you in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Hallelujah. Shall we bring our offering? Choir, you may help us. stretch our hands towards our offering as we bless it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Our Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for all the hands that have stretched out to give unto the needy. Father, we thank you because your people have given even when they are in the wilderness position. My Lord, my God, we thank you because you are God. You are God in the good season. You are God even in the bad season. Tonight, my Lord, my God, 
we speak the blessings of the living God upon this offering that has been outstretched unto you. And we say, Lord God, bless every hand that is outstretched to give unto those that are in need. My Father, my God, we thank you tonight. We speak the blood of Jesus upon this offering in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah.